Welcome back to the show, everybody. Check out these headlines we have for you. Why XRP wins? We're going to show you so much information today. We got Jim Rickard saying there's nothing to crypto. It's all collapsing around us. He's not necessarily wrong, but we got the, but we have plenty to look at today. We got relationship with a U.S. financial institution and a Ripple partner, ladies and gentlemen, and everything else to go with it. Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow us on TikTok, YouTube, and Twitter for exclusive content. Right now, $913 billion market cap for crypto. We're up 4.1% right now. Bitcoin, 17,800 plus. We see Ethereum is 1,300 plus. The market's feeling a surge. It's kind of parabolic here. I don't know what's happening, but you know what? Tether's sitting here at $65.8 billion market cap. We're going to keep an eye on it. 39 cents per XRP is the market's moving and responding here. Let's take a look at this. If you haven't done it, ladies and gentlemen, now's the time to join the Digital Perspectives Mastermind Group. Full access to over 700 plus in that private Telegram group. Private weekly live streams, and we're diving down into the information to give us all the tools we need to achieve our personal goals, no matter what they are. Private groups and lessons, and an exclusive VIP ticket to our live event, and it's a special one-year membership. If you join right now, don't mess around. Make that investment in yourself. This community is amazing inside of this group, and I'm telling you, uh, it only gets better. Make sure you join for that and it runs out. Link underneath the video. We will shut the door. I'm telling you i promise you that right here we see the complaint against sbf and ftx and here we see ram has re- extracted the main highlights with one sentence summary takes i'm going to give this to you really quickly here from at least may 2019 through november 2022 bankman fried engaged in a scheme to defraud equity investors in ftx trading Oh my, oh my. That right there says a lot in itself. That's a hell of a first sentence, isn't it? FTX, the crypto asset trading platform of which he was CEO co-founder at the same time that he was also defrauding the platform's customers. Bankman Freed raises more or raised more than $1.8 billion from investors, including U.S. investors who bought an equity stake in FTX, believing that FTX had appropriate controls and risk management measures. Unbeknownst to those investors and to FTX's trading customers, Bankman Freed was orchestrating a massive years-long fraud, diverting billions of dollars of the trading platform's customer funds for his own personal benefit and to help grow his crypto empire. Boy, I tell you what, that doesn't look at all like the SEC complaint to Ripple, now does it? No criminal, no fraud charges in that Ripple case. Here we see Jim Rickards, who I'm a huge fan of, and shout out to Stansberry Research. If you haven't seen the recent interview I did with Matt McCall, I encourage you to go look at that. But here he says there's nothing there with crypto, and it's all collapsing. You need to hear what he says here in this quick clip. And remember, cryptocurrency does not mean digital assets or payment currency. Somebody take a listen. People go, oh, Jim Rickards, he's a dinosaur. He doesn't understand technology. It's a nonsense. I read, you know, Satoshi Nakamoto's paper uh, within months of its coming out. I've been in, you know, gold, Bitcoin debate since 2010. I actually know a lot about it, which kind of brings me to my point, um, which is um, with nothing in the center, they created the, they replicated the entire structure of Wall Street. So you have exchanges, custodians, futures, options, settlement, clearance, lending, yields, etc. This whole Wall Street infrastructure, financial infrastructure, around nothing. I mean, Tesla stock, for example, maybe you like Tesla, maybe you don't. That's an individual choice. But at least they make cars. There's a real car there. And even mm-hmm. intangibles, you know, insurance companies provide services. There's something there. In crypto, there's nothing there. But they've replicated this infrastructure. And so a lot of the wealth that's been generated in crypto is because uh, you own uh, a crypto exchange or you own uh, a lender set. Now that's all imploding. It's it's kind of a replay of 2008, except instead of you know uh, Bear Stearns, Lehman Brothers, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and you know Morgan Stanley was hanging by a thread. It's uh, 
uh, you know, uh, well, FTX most prominently, but it, Genesis is, is kind of considering bankruptcy, et cetera. So all that is collapsing. And he's right. And it is collapsing. And again, as we move through this information, I want to encourage you to know that there is a huge difference between cryptocurrency and digital assets and certainly a payment currency. Let's hear him talk about this now as he covers here the dollar as a reserve currency will not be deposed overnight, but as a payment currency, BRICS coalition plus OPEC and China individually, all these countries are working on new payment system right now, and it will start to roll out this year and later. Take a listen. Parent for what we're talking about, which is uh, a, a world where uh, the, the, the dollar as a reserve currency will not be deposed overnight. But as a payment currency, there's a difference between a reserve currency and a payment currency. Right. Anything, anything can be a payment currency. If I want to pay you with baseball cards and bottle caps and you're okay with that, then it's a, it's a currency. So uh, when we see the BRICS Plus, uh, the Shanghai Cooperation right. Organization, OPEC Plus, uh, China individually, all these countries are the the uh, uh, European, the Eurasian European e- Economic Union, which is you know Putin's answer to the EU. All of these organizations are working on new payment systems right now, and they're going to start to roll them out this year and later. So that's going to be a, a radical change in how we pay for things. And there you have it. And it's absolutely true. And we reported on it here. Bretton Woods ended today. It is official, ladies and gentlemen. Saudi Arabia and the surrounding nations that honored the petrodollar to be the U.S. dollar used for all sales of oil coming out of OPEC is now not going to be that. It is being agreed upon through Shanghai Exchange that uh, Saudi Arabia and the other players in that area will, in fact, use the Chinese yuan on the Shanghai Exchange to trade oil and gas for the first time. Things are changing. There's a difference between Bitcoin, a crypto, and payment currencies. And more importantly, as we've discussed here on this channel, payment systems. That's what we're talking about here. The XRP ledger does have the XRP token that runs on it, but it is the XRP ledger as a decentralized exchange is where the real value there is, right? That's the reason you'd want to be on that payment rail or that highway to begin with. That's the ultimate goal. Then we have this unrolling here. We're pleased to announce that a leading U.S. bank selected Temenos to modernize its wealth management platform in the cloud. Temenos Open Platform will help the bank drive growth across Europe and Asia Pacific. You know, this again is a reminder that Temenos and this U.S. financial leading institution is important to us because we know that Temenos is a Ripple partner. They integrate the Ripple technology to make their system better. And here is a Temenos demonstration we covered years ago that shows the layout of how it works. Ripple sitting right in the middle of that Temenos T24. So again, there is a huge difference between what Jim Rickards is talking about collapsing to nothing and what we're talking about is new payment systems and payment currencies that in fact will be used that will not depose the U.S. dollar as a global reserve currency. And I tell you that among other things we're about to see is why I believe XRP wins at the end of the day, whether we're talking about this case or just in the matter of being able to move forward after this case and certainly with clarity from the government and everywhere else at its full scale intended use. I say it all the time. Here's some facts about ISO 20022 that we've discussed, but this thread is straight fire. Shout out to Camden and everyone else who contributed to this thread. There have been lots of misinformed threads, videos and tweets about ISO 20022, so I thought it would be best to unpack what exactly ISO 20022 is and what it means for Web3 payment rails, as we've just talked about hearing from Jim Rickards. And we're about to hear from Jim Rickards again, and you're really going to like what he says. ISO 2002 is or ISO 2022. Let's just call it 222. Uh, open standard that anyone can use, anyone can contribute, and is free to anyone to implement on any network. 
It is a methodology for defining financial data content. It is a standard for messaging standards as well as for APIs. It's not just about messages or APIs, however. ISO 20022 also provides a common language for machines and people to exchange information about financial business set out in a formal dictionary. Its principal focus is on the content of the dictionary rather than the technicalities of how data is exchanged. You can use the dictionary to help translate between messages that use different syntaxes as well as APIs and to solve other kinds of problems where a shared understanding of the business is important, such as internal system integration. It goes on to say, although ISO 20022 is messages are mostly exchanged in XML, ISO 222 doesn't depend on a specified message syntax. And a different syntax is required to satisfy a business or technical requirement. Or if a new syntax emerges, uh, ISO 222 can accommodate it. The current migration to ISO 222 by financial institution that is occurring now for all institutions who send or receive payments related to MT messages over SWIFT, ISO 222 schemas also reduce the risk of sending or receiving incorrect data. And ISO is an internationally recognized way of doing something. So the whole ISO 222 thing is about faster messaging. Okay, what about payments? What is the point in having super fast messages if payments still take three to four days? Payments have to be sped up too, in theory. Faster, safer, modern, and in a language method that all understand. Yes, precisely. The better and faster the swift payments work, the more need there is for instant settlement. Enter Web3 Rails. ISO 222 has no native cryptos. However, there are firms that have facilitated ISO 222 compliant infrastructures that have chosen to use crypto for optional payment settlement on top of that compliant infrastructure. Some great examples of this are Zenfin using XDC, Ripple using XRP, and Hedera using HBAR. Come on in. I bet dimes and donuts the idea of tokenized value transfer came before rich text data messaging. I would too. To me, it has always seemed that a way of organizing and storing data regarding uh, message services for businesses, financial, retail sectors can encompass all forms of interchange. So what about the relation of ISO 222 and settlement? To recap, ISO 222 is a messaging format and business language created in 2004. It's important to understand that ISO 222 messages are vital to instant payments and in the overall modernization of payments process. Specifically, they provide a structure and data-rich common language that is readily exchanged among corporates and banking systems. This means much more detailed information and fewer errors, less manual Annual intervention and fewer delays for the end customer. He goes on to bring this thing home here. Stay with us now. <clears throat> what does it look like? In an ISO 222 message payment beneficiary for information is entered into credit field, which includes <clears throat> excuse me, the name address as well as additional structured elements, including street name, building name, postcode, and town name. So you get it what it looks like. Is the ISO 222 related to clearing and settlement and what procedure is followed? Prefunding, correspondent banking, via crypto, etc.? Not exactly. It only enables better communication between the systems responsible for settlement. Clearing spe and specifies uh, <clears throat> how settlement will be done. So this is where it brings it home. The question I always get is, will ISO 222 adoption benefit XRP? Among others, yes, but also including SWIFT and the whole financial industry. SWIFT payments with prefunding will become faster and cheaper. The better and faster the SWIFT payments work, the more need there is for instant settlement. 
Do your own research and connect the dots. The fourth industrial revolution starts with a revolution in payments and digital assets. And I believe that too. And that's why I don't worry about when someone says crypto is crashing and going to nothing because I'm invested in payment systems, which I believe are digital assets until we get further clarity because they actually work and they do what they say they can do. And here's the other difference. And who are we going to hear from again? We're going to hear from none other than Jim Rickards again. And listen to what he says when comparing proof of work, proof of stake to federated Byzantine agreement, which just happens to be what XRP uses. The proof of work, proof of stake, and federated Byzantine. And by the way, if you don't know, that's exactly what the XRP ledger is all about, the Federated Byzantine Agreement, as well as the consensus mechanism. Now, I want you to very carefully, that's from David Schwartz, and I want you to very carefully listen to this clip from Jim Rickards as he breaks down very clearly what's a winner and what's a loser to him. That was the original idea. So the question is, what's your method of validation? And that's what distinguishes one blockchain from the other. So there's, there, I've listed four of them here, but there are others. Proof of work, that's what blockchain uses. And you know what the work is? You gotta like factor these, you know, uh, 87 digit uh, prime numbers uh, into, or numbers into prime factors. Uh, it's a lot of computer crunching, completely clunky, completely inefficient, non-sustainable. I'll talk about that in a second, but that's Bitcoin. There's something else called proof of stake meaning you actually, this is what Ether is based on, you demonstrate that you have a certain percentage of the processing power, so you step up based on your stake. There's proof of space. Uh, space is storage space on a hard drive, so I get to vote on the blockchain, I get to vote on validating the blockchain because I've decided to devote a certain amount of my hard drive to that process. That's, there's a new coin called Spacement. Uh, and then there's the Byzantine Agreement, Byzantine Agreement, um, there's something, there's a version of that called the Federated Byzantine Agreement, uh, which uh, I uh, personally uh, think is the best, um, much more uh, uh, much more robust to some of the problems we're talking about, and there are others, but the point... And, th and there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That's Jim Rickards, the gold guy, telling you crypto's going to nothing. It's all collapsing around us. And then also revealing to you that he believes the best technology out there just happens to be Federated Byzantine Agreement, which was used by XRP and the Ledger. Pretty damn interesting stuff right there. XRP four-hour breakout here from Megrag Crypto. Shout out to them for this information. It says XRP is at the apex of a symmetrical triangle. Usually 54% breaks to the upside, but 40% of it will break to the down. What will it do? We don't know. But I could tell you this, if the case were to end in the next two days, we might be able to take the best guess ever. I don't know what happens, but I tell you what, we're going to pay attention just to see if there is something that happens, as was rumored by Charles Hoskinson, whether it's a settlement or a summary judgment or some other ruling. But if it doesn't, I am prepared to go the distance, as I know most of you are as well. You got to uh, check out your own appetite for risk in your portfolio. Don't mess around. Join that Digital Perspectives Mastermind Group. We have a weekly live stream, and it will be tomorrow at 6 p.m. You're going to want to be in it. We're going to take on building a wealth portfolio, a portfolio in crypto, and getting it done right the way you know you need to do it. I cannot wait. I will see you all there. Not financial advice from me or anyone else. I'll catch all of you on the next one.